Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of the Fabric Spotlight, where we discuss everything cloud, infrastructure, enterprise, with builders and thinkers from the cloud space. Today, it's my pleasure to speak with Bernd Heinrichs, till most recently, the Chief Digital Officer, Mobility Solutions at Bosch. Previously, Bernd was a longtime uh, executive at Cisco. Hello, Bernd, and thanks for taking the time to speak with me today. Hi, Rajan. Nice to be here. So, Bernd, we uh, at The Fabric have uh, known you most recently as a Bosch executive. Uh, before you, we talk about your last role at Bosch itself, uh, would you talk about the journey that got you here and uh, also about the new role that you have recently assumed? Thank you, Rajan. Um, yeah, I, uh, you know, my... My career started about 30 years ago when I uh, entered um, an engineering leadership role at, at, at Ericsson. And then I spent uh, a half lifetime, more or less, at, at Cisco working on different roads. And uh, at the end, really running the IoT business for Cisco in uh, EMEA before joining um, Bosch Mobility Solutions as a chief digital officer. And in that role, I was really. Um, overlooking all the activities in external uh, type of digital transformation in internal digital transformation and in the cultural transformation, which we had to undertake really to prepare us in the mobility space for the future, which is, in, uh, which is not only a component type of business for Bosch, but which is software services and all of that. And now I decided really to leave the corporate world and uh, join a startup for the first time in my life, even though I have worked a lot with startups, but now being part of one startup, which is a German-based startup, which is working on simplifying the uh, programming of robots in the industrial space and doing it on a, on a kind of a platform type of approach, which is a no-code platform approach. The company is called Wandelbots, and it's uh, standing for change, of robot space, Wandelbots in Germany, and uh, this, and I'm I'm taking the role as a chief growth officer, really scaling it up and trying really to to approach a market with sales, with staff, and um, and uh, marketing type of activities for the company. Congratulations! Uh, it, I'm sure it must be an exciting transformation uh, coming from Cisco and Bosch. I'm sure you'll bring a lot of value to them. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about uh, your just your recent role uh, at Bosch itself in the digital transformation area first. Uh, yeah. What would you say you did in advancing the business agenda for Bosch through the digital transformation efforts? Uh, what key initiatives and innovations uh, were you focused on? Yeah, thank you for that question. I, I think I... I gave a, a first part of this answer in my previous answer because we first thought, how can we structure digital transformation for a company like Bosch uh, in the mobility space? So we said there are internal focused activities uh, and there are external focused activities and there are cultural focused activities. And uh, what we did in the internal space is really, we looked into processes in the first place. Do we have the right processes in in sales, in, in the production field, etc. And uh, if not, how can we improve them, bring in higher efficiency and uh, get people behind these ideas and get them really driving these ideas. And uh, what was really essential in succeeding in that is really taking the people into this process, right? For example, going into the factories and ask the people who are working in the factory what they would improve by automation, by robotization, and uh, make things more efficient and, and productive. And we taught them how to implement it and uh, really to get into process automation. That was a big, big step. But we also looked into all the tool landscape which we had in place. Where can we optimize? Where, we, where can we standardize? Where can we consolidate uh, really to get better? And that was that was that were some of the parts we did in the internal space. In the out in the uh, external space, it was all about how can we as Bosch Mobility move from a component delivery hardware component delivery space into a more 
we are offering solutions, services, software solutions to our uh, customers, which are mainly OEMs. But at the end, it was not only the OEMs anymore. We also talked to mobility service providers, to e-scooter companies, to uh, the Uber kind of the, uh, of the world type of customers, and many, many more. But most important is really to highlight that when you all when you want to do that in a traditional big company like uh, Bosch, you need to take the people with you and you need to uh, get them involved and uh, take away maybe that some of them are afraid of these changes and really work with the people, explain things, educate them. And it's an ongoing process which you never should stop. And uh, that is where we put most of our emphasis on. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. So digital transformation is more than just about technology. It is yeah. processes. It is largely about people too. Uh, so that's very interesting. Uh, you know, a part of the digital transformation, as uh, we are all aware, is the role the cloud plays in it. And as you know, Fabric is focused on the cloud infrastructure space. Yeah. Uh, what are the key areas of cloud adoption and not just in Bosch, but in general that you see? And how do you see it even affecting the startup that you're moving into? Yeah, you know, the, uh, I think what is key and essential really to get into the cloud world is really on both sides again, internal and external. And we did a lot of the activities internally really to, 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 to make clear to the organization that cloud doesn't mean it is insecure. It is secure if you build it in the right way. You, but you need to make that very clear and convince the people who are using it that moving to from on-premise to cloud doesn't hurt our capabilities of being in the market, right? And working and sharing data and whatever, right? So that was a key thing really to address, the security space. Maybe that is especially for a German company, but I don't think so. That is a general thing you need to uh, fix and to work on the security activities. Of course, you need to look into the commercial aspects, which on a long term are much more attractive if you go cloud. And then third is really that you that you that cloud, in my understanding, is not only a centralized cloud, but cloud is more than a centralized thing. It is a it is a combination of centralized and decentralized approach going into the edge, right? And uh, really uh, for, for internal tool setup, but also for the external services we are offering. And I am a strong advocate of going edge because I believe data, especially for the business, has especially a, a, a value if you act on the data in real time. And if you want to act on the data in real time, you need to do it in an edge, which is a distributed cloud. And if you, if you think about a car which is in motion, if you want to automate the driving of the car and do things like that, and you want to offer safety topics, uh, then you need to work on the data in real time. And that is clearly understood. And it was really a convincing argument for the company to move that uh, into this direction in a more aggressive way. Oh, yeah, that is uh, wonderful. You led almost uh, into my uh, second set of questions, or you pretty much answered a lot of my second set of questions, which was all about the edge. But you hit upon an interesting point, which is that data is distributed and goods also become very, very important, especially as you look at the IoT space and mobility space. So what kind of innovations that you see happening at the edge uh, is it more about data? Is it more about security? Is it about uh, in the from an infrastructure standpoint? Is it about Kubernetes? Um, what are the uh, major technology innovations that you see, and what are the challenges that you see as people adopt uh, the edge cloud? Yeah. So uh, first of all, it is really to uh, you know my motivation to explaining is as as the more you go into edge, the more you go into decentralized the more secure you, you become, right? It is, uh, that is what we learned when we grew up in, in the internet early timeframes. That was the origin of the, of the internet way. And that is also a very important topic for Edge. Edge makes things, in my view, much more 
uh, secure and uh, difficult to track and uh, observe from the outside than than a pure centralized type of solution, which is a, a cloud in the original way of thinking, right? So uh, that is very important. And the technologies which play a key role are, of course, security related. But uh, you need to look into the different, I think they are use case dependent. If I build an edge solution for a driving car, it is different than an edge solution for a factory or for a plant. And it's different uh, uh, than an edge solution for a, for a power tool type of activity. So we had to build solutions which have similar building blocks around security, around data mining but also immediate and and that is for me the key and i mentioned before immediate real-time type of activities and uh, how can you do that you cannot do it with fixed algorithms you need to learn from the data how to act on this and then a lot of new technologies come into place like machine learning type of things deep learning things like really ai capabilities which make it happen uh, a Edge without AI capabilities will not work, in my view. Okay, uh, interesting. Uh, you talked a lot about uh, AI, deep learning, and also data. And the, an interesting perspective that you brought was actually that you are more secure by having data distributed than centralized. Mm -hmm. um, can you also touch a little bit about the quality of experience along in a distributed world? How uh, how you think uh, the quality of experience for untethered mobile workers uh, in this new normal, which is a distributed workforce working from different parts? Uh, I'm sure that is also an issue in addition to the security uh, in the space. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. So. Um... Working in a distributed world from different locations, I, I think I grew up with that, right? So I, I did it in my my lifetime at, at Cisco all the time, and it is based on the pandemic. It is introduced also in the Bosch type of working uh, really actively. And uh, we learned, uh, not by intention, but uh, by maybe by, how do you call it, by chance, uh, that working in a distributed way on, on projects together is, is as performant than doing it in the same room at the same location and the same environment. And uh, it is accepted at Bosch that distributed working and working in a remote type of way, in a virtual type of way, is as productive as working, or in most cases, depending on what you're working on, than working in the same location. If that was your question. Yep, yep. Uh, my question also related to, do you see uh, workers complaining about their quality of experience because they are now moving away from a, uh, an office setting to having to work in places with uh, probably uh, varying qualities of uh, the connectivity do you see that as an issue uh and do you i i'm sure you would see that in a mobility standpoint from a car standpoint as the cars yeah. move from place location mm -hmm. to location no i i agree with you it, it is definitely an issue of course if i would work in an environment where you are now it i i would really love it so it's it's nice to work there. <laughs> no it is um no, they are complaining. Yes, they are complaining because, but it depends, you know, uh, it's not only a, a moving uh, type of environment where it's getting complicated. Yesterday, I, I took a fast train in Germany and I was on the, on the, in the train. And uh, I, I remember when I was in a train five years ago, it didn't work with a, with a really good connection, but now it worked, right? So it was really top quality. I could really stream. I could do everything what I wanted to do, which I normally do in, a, in an office location. I would say uh, working from home sometimes is, is worse than working in a train in Germany because Germany, for example, is behind the broadband. And I'm open on that. And I'm not hiding that. Germany is behind the broadband 
uh, penetration compared to a lot of other com countries. And uh, we really need to improve that situation. And uh, I'm sure in the US or in other countries it's better. That is my experience. Uh, but uh, that is something which uh, has to change and improve, definitely. But it has already improved a lot over the last one to two years based on the situation we are in. Uh, putting pressure on uh, really getting high speed into every household. Um, that is key really to be competitive in the future. Well, Bernd, I would uh, recommend uh, that you look at one of the fabric portfolio companies which will improve the quality of your experience on uh, mm -hmm. your untethered devices sometime. It's just a sales pitch, just a joke. Uh, but uh, <laughs> the, the other part of it is you talk, fascinating that you talk a lot about uh, distributed uh, data, distributed uh, clouds, edge clouds. I'm sure in that theme of uh, a distributed environment, which you seem to be passionate about, what do you see blockchain playing a role in this particular environment, uh, whether it is IoT, whether it is supply chain, uh, what kind of uh, enterprise blockchain initiatives that uh, you have seen in the uh, marketplace and what have you uh, undertaken any initiatives in the space? Yeah, of course, at Bosch, we are very active in the blockchain uh, area. Also, when, when we talk about IoT, when we talk about millions of devices, blockchain is a vehicle really to secure the environment even better, really to build negotiations between different devices in a, in a really productive way. And that is where Bosch is really, I would say, is investing a lot as a forerunner and especially in a mobility world which, with a lot of moving parts with millions, billions of devices, blockchain is a key really to enable a, a really a high performance, secure type of environment. And uh, I wouldn't say we have the products on the road yet already, but uh, you will see a lot of activities from Bosch in this direction, right? And for, for me, it is, there is no, no, no real IoT world without AI and without blockchain behind it. They solve the problems of data and the problem of data, really working on data and taking value out of it and the problem of security. And, uh, and that these are the essential problems which I identified at the beginning. Uh, that is tremendous insight. So if uh, were, I were to paraphrase you, you would say that AI, blockchain and a distributed uh, data environment are very key moving forward uh, in yeah. the new world. Nice. Exactly. Uh, you have been at Cisco for a very long time and yeah. then most recently at Bosch and now uh, into a startup. Uh, and you, you have worn various hats from vendor to a customer. Um, in the cloud, from a cloud perspective, what can you share? Uh, any insights about the cloud infrastructure from the various vantage points uh, that you have had uh, uh, till very recently. Yeah, and it's even, I would extend it even to the startup I'm working on now, right? This, uh, yep. maybe I start with that, right? So we are, what this startup is doing, and I'm part of it, therefore I'm talking we now in that respect. We really build a platform, which is a cloud based platform, which is offering really. Uh, um, type of a no-code environment which really enables you and me who are not mean really specialists, I guess, in programming robots to do this in an automated way, right? And this is only possible if you do it in a, in a cloud-based platform play. And uh, because otherwise you don't get enough data, you don't get enough inputs, you don't get, get enough environments really connected. You need to do it cloud-based and that is what we are doing, right? And I am convinced this brings business opportunities not only for the company, but also for the customers, which we cannot really even um, sense at the moment. It is completely big and completely new and uh, we will see what, what type of services and applications and uh, will be generated based on that. That is what I'm doing now, right? And I'm, I'm really curious to see that. But of course, if I look back into my, um, my uh, beginning at, at Cisco, or my journey at Cisco, right? It, it became 
it became clear to all of us that that cloud is really the enabler for a lot of new type of network designs and communications environments. And uh, you know, Cisco itself with WebEx and with other things was an early cloud company. I, I once said, you know, I or, or Chambers said it, John Chambers. Um, WebEx was initially the biggest cloud offering in the world, right? Uh, really going uh, and using uh, a cloud-based type of environment for communications, video, and whatever, in collaboration. And uh, and you see how it evolved and uh, how many uh, type of activities and similar solutions, uh, Zoom and uh, Teams and whatever, uh, popped up, which are all cloud-based, right? There is no life without a cloud anymore. And that is... That is going to happen. And if you then look into the mobility space at Bosch, it is definitely the case that, that Bosch is working towards a mobility cloud solution, which is really offering services for different OEMs, for different customers, based on a platform, which is a cloud platform again, right? Which, which can be agnostic about the underlying physical type of environment, which can be all kind of a of environments, but uh, it is really adding the uh, the cloud, um, let's say, the cloud services added by Bosch on top of these different hardware platforms below, right? So it is it, the whole cloud journey started from me for me already 15, 20 years ago at Cisco, and it was always part of my journey. And Wonderbots, the new company I'm in, it is at the end it's all about a, a, a platform cloud-based approach, right? Which makes a difference. Awesome. Uh, you probably heard uh, my dog bark uh, behind me. As, yeah. Uh, yeah it? So <laughs> he agrees. That's good. <laughs> we agree that is good. Absolutely. Uh, the cloud-based environment makes this possible that we could work wherever we are and doing this kind of video collaboration. Uh, as a part of both uh, Cisco, Bosch, and now in your new avatar, uh, you have been exposed to startups quite a bit. I'm sure yeah. as a customer for, from startups, you've met entrepreneurs. I'm sure you have advised them. What perspectives would you share with entrepreneurs for this new world? Uh, what advice would you give them? What successes? What do you see as uh, the, uh, the uh, formula for success? Or what have you seen as things to avoid for failures? I only can say, you know, I'm a big advocate of really saying, okay, and I, I work a lot with startup, but I, I was also in the uh, in the Cisco strategy office for a few years doing M&A activities for Cisco in the beginning 2000 timeframe. And, uh, but I want to say, I, I, I think the biggest chance of really becoming big and scalable and a successful company later on originating out of a startup is really going cloud. It is going platform and it's going not only B2C, but in the meantime, also B2B. And uh, that gives you a reach and, uh, and a structure, if you do it in the right way, which is reducing costs on the other side in terms of sales, in terms of operations, etc., by, by going this way. And it gives you an exponential type of journey possibility, if you do it right, compared to anything else, which is not cloud, which is an is a kind of a linear business perspective I would give it, right? So I would always, if, if it's possible, think about cloud-based, platform-based if you want to become big and successful. Thanks, Bernard, for the very insightful conversation. And Thank uh, you. You're welcome. And uh, stay tuned for another uh, episode of the Fabric Spotlight series. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm.